so good morning all of you and we'll uh, discuss something on underground various forms of underground sources okay so uh, the last class what we discussed is, is about uh, the different aquifers confined and confined we have also discussed on uh, uh, like what is this uh, aquifuge aquitard and aquiclude and the last point, uh, the specific storage. Okay, so this I think we have stopped in this slide. Uh, specific storage is uh, defined as the volume of water that an aquifer releases or stores per unit surface area per unit decline or rise of water table. So please make a note on this. These definitions are important. Have a look very in a clarity way. Okay, either you can remember or memorize directly. So defined as the volume of water that an aquifer releases or stores per unit surface area per unit decline or rise of water table. Okay, so that is just you can simply measure or calculate or estimate in terms of a specific storage. Okay, so we'll move on to various forms of underground sources. Number one, uh, infiltration galleries. Number two is infiltration well and spring. And uh, last one is about well. Okay, so well we will we'll also include tube wells as well. Okay. So infiltration galleries, infiltration well, spring and the well. We'll see one by one. So infiltration galleries are, uh, these are horizontal tunnels. Let me show the diagram first, then uh, probably could understand better the uh, definitions or uh, the theory part. Okay. So uh, you could able to, uh, this is, now you just imagine uh, that this is uh, perpendicular to the screen. Okay. Perpendicular to the screen, you just imagine this is, this is your uh, river bed. Okay, so just imagine which this is a river. It is flowing perpendicular to your uh, screen. Okay, and you can plan uh, the galleries like this. Galleries like this. So the only thing is about you have to fetch the water or you have to take the water from a sources, groundwater source. Okay, so it is not from a river or below the soil also, below the soil also, okay, from the groundwater. Okay, so these are. Uh, the galleries are the underground tunnels, perforated tunnels. Okay, so directly on the uh, wall here, or you can also have perf perforated pipes. Okay, perforated pipes. So imagine our situations like this: you have a river. This also is a perpendicular to your screen. Okay, I can I can uh, here you have a say example uh, groundwater at the bottom of your river. And if it is anything on the river, it is flowing. There could be a possibilities of infiltration. If this is not uh, flowing, then you could uh, depend on the, say, example groundwater for your uh, consumption purposes. Okay. So now if you have to take out uh, the water from uh, the underground sources. Say, example below the uh, river or from aquifer. So what you do, you just you construct a construct a uh, uh, say example uh, tunnel which is, is also like parallel to the direction of the flow parallel to the direction of flow this could be either perforated or you can also have perforated pipes like this perforated so this is directly per uh, perforation okay and uh, this is, is by perforated pipe you could also see like here and one layer of gravel and here also it is completely packed with the gravel to avoid the entry of other sediments into the collection systems okay so once it has been collected here in the well and you can you could able to pump out you could able to pump out okay so uh, you, the, the whole arrangement you can call it as this is infiltration gallery okay sometimes they may call it as infiltration well also okay so we'll see now so the horizontal tunnel which is constructed through the water bearing strata for tapping underground water near river lake or streams are called as infiltration galleries okay this only for uh, the highlighted points you can remember for the examination point of view. Horizontal channel, that means uh, this, uh, the second slide. And uh, imagine this is, uh, this is, uh, this is a cross section. But imagine now the river is flowing uh, perpendicular to your uh, screen. Okay, so uh, per perpendicular to a screen. Then you can construct these sort of chambers or these sort of constructions. So that's what has been mentioned in this first point. Tunnel which is constructed through the water bearing strata for tapping underground water near the lake or river or stream. Okay, that you can simply call it as infiltration galleries. Okay. These trenches are dug in, dug in the bank parallel to the stream. That's what I told you, parallel to the stream below the groundwater 
level or below the stream bed. Please make a note on this point. Okay, that's what I told you. Directly you can have below the stream bed or you can also have below the groundwater level. Okay, so third point, tile, concrete or perforated plastic collecting pipes are placed in the gravel lined trenches and connected to a storage well. That's what I told you. So this one, okay, this could be uh, uh, concrete pipes or perforated plastic, plastic pipes are placed in the gravel lined trenches, gravel lined trenches. That's what I told you, gravel lined trenches uh, and connected to a storage well. So this is your storage well. Okay, so this uh, uh, gravel medium will act as a packing bed or filtration medium which will not allow other external power when like organic sediments or floating materials get into a storage well or infiltration well. Okay, so please remember this point. Okay, so the advantage of uh, gravel packing is the gravel in the trench filters out sediment and prevents clogging up pipe, clogging up the pipes. So water is, is again pumped from the storage well into the distribution system in the same way as described for infiltration wells. Is it okay? Is it fine? Yes. Okay, and uh, in those who are nearby lake or reservoir, or, or sorry, lake or stream or river, you could also like uh, some other cities may they they may also have infiltration galleries to take uh, or to pump water for distributions inside the cities. Okay, for uh, population or domestic demands. Okay, yes, yeah. So this is what I already mentioned. Now you could understand better. Okay, so this is your river bed. So my intention is is to take out the water from the river so that I can that you can have uh, these are perforated that's what I told you perforated pipes and which is also surrounded by uh, say example gravel packing okay that you can simply call it as this gallery infiltration galleries and uh, then you can take down or bring down the water to a common collection well and from that you can directly either you can use uh, normal pumps or uh, say example other pumping systems to pump the water and supply to the consumers. Okay, yes. Okay, so this is what uh, the porous uh, pipe will look like. Okay, now you just uh, uh, this these pipes. If I have a cut, okay, if I have a cut here, okay, then it could be like this. Okay, so now you could understand uh, these are perforated pipes. Okay, and these are gravel packing, gravel packing surrounded by, and uh, if, if uh, because it's if it is away from, I say example, uh, uh, river banks and I would have seen, okay, river banks and I would have seen almost it's a kilometer, okay, so say example. So now you have to uh, collect the wells maybe near the, sh near, near your bank or near the road or something or near to the bank. So you have to connect through a series of pipes, perforated pipes like this, okay. Is it fine? So this is your uh, cross section and how the longitudinal section of the perforated pipe that is completely open jointed it will look like is it fine yes sir yeah okay now still in the clarity you can understand what is this infiltration gallery okay so these are perforated pipes perforated pipes slotted or perforated pipes and this also is buried uh, 500 mm below the uh, uh, 500 mm below the uh, say example uh, river bed and if, imagine if it is at the top what will happen if it is at the top of the bed, there could be a possibility of failure because of uh, sometimes it's a heavy flow, it will also damage the pipe. Or sometimes it's, uh, it will also scour uh, because of the water velocity. And uh, say example, uh, this gravel will go off and uh, these perforated pipes are directly exposed to water and there could be a lot of blockages by the organic sediments or floating materials or what. Is it okay? So this is being taken to a collector well or catchment well where, where you can pump out. Is it fine? Okay. okay. Perforated pipes, gravel packing, packing, and uh, minimum uh, 500 uh, millimeter, okay, 50 centimeter below the bottom of your uh, uh, river bed. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this this is one more clarity. Uh, the cross section of uh, pump placed in the sum of infiltration gallery. Okay. So this is your river bed, and uh, this is your uh, filter packing. This is your gallery assembly take out the, to the water, to the well and pump out. Okay, So now you could understand better with the color difference. Okay, So this is natural bed of your river and uh, this I have to uh, dig out and pack with gravel. These are my 
these are the galleries, infiltration galleries. Okay, yes. Okay. So still in the clarity, you can understand. Okay, so this collector well can be of uh, two or the, more than two three. Okay, something like uh, you may have a directions like this. Have you got my point? So you have uh, perforated pipes of this one because this one pipe may not be sufficient to withdraw the water or uh, your quantity. So what you do, you just connect number of perforated pipes to a common well. So that is other name, but you can also remember like that. This is being mentioned in two, uh, two perforated pipe slots. Okay, and uh, this is the way they do or connect infiltration galleries to a common well. Okay, one and two. So this is what they do it. Okay, and the second one is this infiltration well. It's very simple. Uh, you can have uh, this is what I have mentioned. Okay, so the, the whole assembly you can the whole thing you can call it as is infiltration uh, uh, gallery. And this alone you can call it as infiltration well. Infiltration well. Okay, infiltration wells are shallow well uh, constructed in series along the banks of the river in order to collect the river water seeping through the bottoms, seeping through their bottoms. Infiltration wells are shallow well. Okay, so these are wells are generally constructed in brick masonry with the open joints. Please make a note down. Because objective is to uh, take the water. Okay, you should also give a way where water will be collected in a well. Okay, if it is imagine now if it is completely plastered on both the sides. Okay, so there could not be a uh, imagine our situation. This what I, I, I this what is mentioned masonry walls. Okay, so wells are. Uh, so water will be collected through this uh, like uh, the brick masonry structures. So these wells are generally constructed with the brick masonry with the open joints, open joints. And they are generally covered at the top and uh, kept open at the bottom. Please make a note on this okay. top, top covered and bottom it is open. OK, so what they do normally they have a inspection uh, manuals at the top. Uh, with the uh, slab cover and if it is anything on to be inspected, they also get in into the infiltration well and do some sort of maintenance. So this is something is important. So this infiltration wells are generally proposed in a river bank, river bed uh, or lake bed to tap water from the unconfined aquifer, from the unconfined aquifer. Okay. So infiltration wells are prepared when the minimum saturated thickness of aquifer is almost 5 meters. This is also something we have to remember. And uh, generally, these infiltration wells are uh, very good, uh, uh, like or provide very good water supply throughout the year. So you need not worry about much about the water uh, water collection. Okay, so it will serve for the whole uh, year. Okay, so infiltration wells. Okay, so even uh, if the water it is just dries up in the, uh, say example, summer in the river, and you could able to get the water through. Uh, groundwater system. That's what the point. Even uh, if uh, the river dries off uh, during uh, summer season and uh, or very little rain, and there could be a possibilities of water from the groundwater from from groundwater. Okay. Yes. And uh, water from stream uh, from the stream passes through the sand and silt in the river bank, and impurities are removed by natural filtration. The advantages of uh, infiltration galleries and infiltration wells. Normally, the natural layer, natural sand layer, will act as a filter, and which will not allow any, uh, say, example, uh, uh, impurities to get into systems. So, those who are, I think, familiar in Trichy, we do a lot of infiltration wells inside the river Kaveri. You would have seen. So, when you are traveling from, uh, uh, say, example, Trichy to Chennai, on uh, right hand side and left hand side of the river Kaveri, you could also see in that would have seen a lot of uh, wells inside infiltration wells very very simple okay so infiltration wells here it is inside the river but some places say example imagine our situations where uh, uh, perennial rivers river ganga and Brahmaputra. so it, it is somewhat uh, not at all feasible to have a uh, infiltration wells and galleries inside the river okay because this water flow is very very heavy it will also every time it will damage your structures so instead of that they can also do all the systems in the river bank that's the only difference is it fine Yes, sir. Yeah. If the natural filtration is not sufficient, and if you feel like this, you are 
water is still have a lot of contaminations then you just go for a treatment okay that is something is important okay subsoil normally the trichy would have seen there is no treatment systems at all okay there is no treatment plant there is no water treatment plant because they do uh, 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 water uh, from the river kaveri okay all infiltration wells are inside the river kaveri take out the water at max they will do only disinfection okay they will bring down to say example uh, to the city and uh, in the uh, collection tanks in the collection tanks or the sumps they add only disinfection that's all no other treatment systems been given for these sort of uh, like collection systems okay so infiltration is well i already mentioned to you so this is uh, uh, look like uh, this one perforated pipes and over which you have a gravel bed and water will be collected in a well and uh, from uh, simple pumping you can uh, take out the water supply to the consumers okay yeah if number of perforated pipes number of porous pipes are connected to a common well that you can simply call it as jack well so please remember this is something important so one perforated pipe may not be sufficient to uh say example meet out your uh, water meet out your quantity so what do you do you just have number of uh, have you got my point this may be your river and inside you have a well and all along you have a perforated pipes so that all all porous or perforated pipes can be connected to a single well so that you can simply call it as jack well is it okay yes sir yeah okay so now you can simple uh, simply remember uh, infiltration wells line diagram okay so this is your jack well or if it is a single well it will look like this if it is in a single well infiltration well it will look like this okay this is what i told you a bottom open and top covered and top with a man manhole or manhole is also been connected or covered with a cover and if it is anything on okay and if you do any periodical inspection then you can also get in okay and inspect that's what I, i mentioned bottom open and top closed and these are perforations these are perforations so through perforations water will be collected that's what i told you it has been constructed with a, a brick masonry big brick masonry okay yeah the second source is a spring and those who are uh, uh, like nearby the uh, mountainous regions and you would have experienced a spring okay so spring is very simple the ground water flows naturally from the ground at the surface is called as spring okay ground water that flows naturally ground water that flows naturally from the ground at the surface that you can simply call it as a spring okay and a pervious a layer sandwiched between two impervious layer give rise to a natural spring okay imagine now here the bottom also have impervious and top also have impervious layer and below in between you have a uh, that is this aquifer that the system you can call it as Uh, confined aquifers confined aquifers and uh, imagine now and uh, and if it is anything on the faulty joint or somewhere here or if it is anything on the crack water will be oozing out freely okay that's what ground water will be taken to the surface that you can simply call it as spring is it okay yes sir yeah so the flow rate in the spring normally depends on uh, the ground water recharge condition the season and water demand of vegetations so if you have a continuous rainfall and uh, the whole aquifer or ground water is replenished is very very faster and you may get a continuous uh, spring flow and if it is no water automatically they you could not find any spring at all so that's what uh, it's very common whenever you visit uh, somewhere nearby the uh, like uh, the mountainous regions or uh, say example uh, a good water table level you could also find lot of springs natural springs that is not continuous so this depends on uh, recharge conditions and the season summer and winter winter you may get or rainy season you may get lot of spring and summer you may not and uh, the demand of water this is imagine now uh, in the bed you have lot of uh, trees it will also take out the water and uh, uh, the free flow will be minimized very very faster very very fast okay yeah so these are uh, different types of springs okay for the examination the layouts and the definitions are important okay so gravity depression spring number 1 gravity depression springs and uh, these gravity springs occur in unconfined aquifers okay Con uncon unconfined aquifers okay so imagine now a situation 
okay and you have a natural dip natural dip okay and uh, below the water table and there you could find lot of what free flow okay so when the ground surface dips below the water table and uh, uh, you may get a depression and the depression is get filled with lot of water so that uh, that you can simply call it as uh, gravity depression springs okay so this gravity depression spring spring springs usually have a very very lower yield a very very smaller yield and uh, if it is in a dry season you could not find it. imagine now the water uh, table drawn down drawn uh, say draw down is is falls below the natural dip Automat automatically there could you could not find any water that's what so yield is very very minimum and uh, dry seasons you may not find water at all and if you lower the ground water also you may not find any water so this is very simple gravity depression springs number 1 Number two is gravity overflow springs. Please make a note on the second one. Gravity overflow springs. Overflow springs. Okay. So uh, here, uh, this uh, the aquifer is is not at all uh, protected by a impervious layer. Please make a note on. Okay. So there is the aquifer is not protected any impervious layer. In, impervious layer. Okay. And uh, uh, there could be a uh, frequent downflow movement of water, okay, downflow movement of water, so that you can simply uh, call it as gravity overflow springs. You can also look into the diagram, okay, look into the diagram, and uh, there is no uh, uh, impervious layer at the bottom or up. You cannot say that this is confined or unconfined aquifer, but and uh, you have uh, something on uh, a small impervious layer in between, in between, and. Uh, here you have a groundwater table and uh, in, the, in this area you may get a natural flow of water. Is it fine? So this you can simply call it as uh, gravity uh, overflow springs. Is it fine? Mm, yes, sir. Okay, so these layouts are important. Otherwise, it's in your own way you can able to write the definition. Okay, so there is this no confined or unconfined aquifer. But because of uh, recharge or rainfall, infiltration may get the water, but you have a smaller impervious layer. And uh, because of these obstructions, water will be free flow. Okay, so that you can simply call it as is, uh, gravity overflow springs. Gravity overflow springs. Okay, and artesian, we are already familiar. Artesian, because this uh, water will be in a uh, uh, or water table or aquifer is in between to uh, previ previous layers, okay? That is, is uh, simply, you can call it as, is, uh, these, these aquifers are confined aquifers, okay? Imagine now if it is anything on fault or uh, cracks or fishes, then water will be oozing out, okay? So this you can call it as artesian springs. If you open up, or if it is anything on the cracks or the falls, and through which water will be completely, water will be, is completely coming out. So that you can call it as artesian springs. So please make a note on. Uh, this is another important uh, artesian ground artesian groundwater is prevented from rising to its free water table level by a overlying imp impervious layer okay if it is anything on uh, cracks that's what i told you cracks or fissures cracks or fissures in the impervious layer are present the water is forced to flow out uh, through these openings until it reaches to the surface when it forms an artesian spring okay so water table is in between two impervious layer and if at all there is no cracks, there is no problem. And if it is any cracks or fissures in between, and water will be uh, flowing out with the pressure. So that you can simply call it as artesian springs. Is it okay? Number one, gravity depression is very simple. And uh, it is also in an unconfined aquifer, natural dip of your soil, and where you can find water. And second one is about gravity overflow springs, because of, here also again, uh, 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 like, uh, unconfined aquifers and if it is anything on the impervious uh, layer in between, okay, uh, uh, water will be freely is oozing, oozing out of the system. And third one is about artesian, it is in the confined aquifers and if it is any faulty joints or uh, fissures and water will be with the higher, water will be forced out with the high pressure. So that you can call it as artesian springs. Is it okay? Okay, now uh, this also in different possibilities you may get a occurrence of spring. So please make a note down. This is uh, the, these are the four uh, way, the, these four ways where you could expect a lot of uh, occurrence of spring. 
okay occurrence of spring in four different uh, cross sections number one saturated soils over impervious rock and permeable and impermeable rock and uh, bar barrier of intrusive rock and fault and fault as flow conduit okay these are the four if it is anything on uh, say example these type of uh, cross sections below the ground you could expect the occurrence of spring you could expect the occurrence of spring so number one okay i'm not going to discuss in detail but you just look into the diagram okay so here uh, we have impervious bedrock impervious bedrock and uh, prevents the uh, downward 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 flow of water so obviously you may get a spring here is it okay so this is very common you would have seen in the mountainous regions or uh, some areas okay if it is any obstructions in the ground water flow it will come out as a spring is it fine this is saturated soil over the impervious rock there you can find uh, these type of springs number 1 number 2 is impermeable and impermeable rock permeable and also impermeable rock so man imagine our situation uh, here uh, uh, the possibility either the rock is been eroded a rock when the rock strata have been uh, uh, tilled and eroded it is possible to uh, for possible for precipitations falling on the one side of the hill to contribute to the spring or the other side okay so you can imagine our situations like this is very common in also like in uh, impervious strata you would have seen or you would have visited some of the mountainous regions where you may get a water but it is somewhat difficult to find where the water is coming in okay so here you may get a spring or some places Uh, this situation where you can find a, a spring like this is it okay okay yeah and uh, then barrier of intrusive rocks barrier of uh, uh, intrusive uh, intrusive rocks okay so if it is anything on uh, like uh, impermeable uh, intrusive rocks say intrusive rocks and here you could expect spring you could expect spring okay so in this case water is water sometimes this is emerges out as a spring okay so it is very common in uh, rocks like uh, granites or uh, in the granite uh, uh, igneous rocks such as granites water moves through weathered zones joints and also fractures okay so th these sort of situations you could expect uh, the springs okay so that's what uh, okay so these are permeable against impermeable impermeable rock and these are through uh, like joints and fractures in granite so where you could get lot of spring here here also you could expect lot of spring here is it fine so these are the different situations where you could expect uh, the occurrence of springs occurrence of springs okay sure. and if it is anything on the faulty joints faulty joints or fractured uh, or geological fault there you could expect say example water uh, oozing out you can have these sort of springs depending upon the topography or depending upon your uh, like geological formations you could also find uh, some sort of a spring uh, like this if it is any fault in a, a rocky region then you could also expect uh, some sort of water water flow so that you can simply call it as uh, spring that is because of fault as flow conduit fault as flow conduit Okay. Yes. The third one is after springs and uh, third uh, sources on well, well, and well is very common. Uh, that is, is a vertical opening which extends from the surface of the ground into the water bearing strata. So you would have seen open wells, and you would have also seen uh, tube wells also, open well and also tube well. So what you do is is uh, dig out the soil and the, it will go up to a, a water bearing strata, water bearing strata. Okay, and uh, water will be collected in a well. You can pump out. so the uh, three factors uh, which form the basis of uh, theory of wells are number one geological conditions and porosity of various layers and uh, quantity of water quantity of water and mainly these wells are classified into two types so number one is open well number two is is uh, tube wells okay open wells and all would have seen and uh, tube wells are uh, tube wells also most of the houses you have a tube well but in open wells you would have seen in temples also Okay, in the temples, all most of the temples they have open well, open well. Okay, yes, and uh, open wells. These are uh, normally two to nine uh, meter in diameter, 
and uh, minimum depth is almost uh, 20 meter. 20 meter. 20 means is almost 50, 60 feet. Okay, and uh, which is suitable for a lower water discharges about almost is five liters per second. Five liters per second. And these wells are normally constructed in either in uh, brick masonry or stone masonry, or sometimes you can use uh, uh, precast concrete uh, rings. This also was noticed. Okay, so. Those who are in Kerala, those who are in some part of Andhra, and you would also experience this type of uh, wells in the household level or in the form of farms. Okay. So it is either constructed with brick or masonry, or uh, you can also go directly with the precast uh, concrete rings. Concrete rings. Is it okay? So two to nine meter in diameter, and uh, twenty meters maximum depth, where the discharge rate is, is five liters per second. And these are com commonly constructed with brick or stone masonry or precast uh, concrete rings. Okay, so this is what the uh, open well will look like. Okay, so normally they may use uh, different methods to uh, like fetch water from a open wells. You would have seen some of the photographs or some of the systems is tradi tradition is being followed. Okay, different. Okay, so water will be in the well and how to fish or how to take out the water out of the well, you can have a different mechanisms. Okay, from they may use uh, different uh, methods and they may also use uh, farm animals. They may also use uh, hand operated pumps. They may also use uh, powered pumps also. Okay, so this is one example. The open well uh, fitted with a hand pump. Is it fine? Mm, yes. Sir. Okay, so so because this is in 20 meter 20 meter and if you want to improve the yield of the well so what do you do normally they may also uh, drill a bore hole 8 to 10 centimeter diameter bore hole in the center of the well so as to tap the additional water from the aquifer or from the fissures of the fissures in the rock okay you would have also noticed well normally like this or they may also have a well with the bore with the bore like this okay if you want to improve or if you want to have additional uh, say example uh, water or to improve your yield and you can also have a borehole 8 to 10 centimeter diameter borehole in the center of the well so that uh, to tap the additional water from the aquifer or from a fissures in the rock okay yes and if a clay or conquer borehole uh, can be made in its center so as to reach the uh, sand strata uh, sand strata and uh, depending upon the depth or availability and this also been classified into uh, two different types shallow well and uh, a deep open well shallow open well and also deep open well okay shallow uh, shallow well this is one of the well uh, is the one which rests in an impervious strata and draws water uh, from the surrounding material so please make a note on what is this shallow well shallow well is this shallow is this again an open well and uh, what will happen you just rest bottom will be rested bottom will be uh, on the uh, bottom rest in the previous strata and draws water uh, from the surrounding material surrounding materials okay this on the other hand deep well normally it is goes uh, further lower uh, it will also rest on impervious layer in impervious layer please make a note on impervious layer impervious layer this is called as motor layer motor layer motor layer uh, and draws its supply from the previous bottom lying below the motor layer through the borehole made into a motor layer. And when it uh, water is generally drawn from an open uh, or dug well by means of bucket or rope. Okay. And the open wells also been covered and fitted with the hand pumps. Okay. So please make a note on and where you stop your, uh, uh, say, example, the depth, whether it is on impervious data or in a pervious data. And if this is a pervious, you can have a shallow open well. And if it is a uh, impervious data that you can call it as a deep open web deep open web okay yes just make a note on this okay so this uh, i guess uh, this uh, uh, the line diagram is enough to understand what is shallow well and also what is the deep well okay shallow well you can stop in the previous zone itself okay and uh, deep well that can be in the uh, that can be on the uh, like impervious layer, impervious layer are called as motor layer. So motor layer is again a clay or other impervious strata. So normally what you have to do now we have to open up this strata. Then only you could find, you could uh, uh, take uh, or you could also collect a lot of water in a well. Okay, yes. 
and the water also will be like flow something uh, 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 the, these types of wells are also called as cavity wells the anyway that we will be discussing in later these type of wells are is also called as cavity wells cavity wells is it okay sir what is difference like uh, pervious layer impervious layer so pervious is, is is completely on porous it will allow all the water to penetrate okay. where the permeability is, is very very high permeability mm -hmm. soil is very very high impervious is, is uh, it will not allow the water to flow or pass okay, okay. yes so so this one because that's what i told you this is for a uh, say example a smaller water quantity say five member in a family i can have it up this type of well and i have 15 or i have uh, say example 15 or 20 or my requirement is more so this water may not be sufficient whatever it is there in the previous layer may not be sufficient so what i do i may also go in a deeper way so in the deeper senses i have to stop or i have to rest my the well in the impervious layer but uh, I should also get water on both previous and also previous and also below the motor layer. So now I have to open up. That's what I told you. I have to open up this uh, motor layer. Thereby the water in the uh, uh, next to previous also will uh, will be collected through your well. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. So depending upon your situations, you can classify into a shallow or deep well. Shallow or deep well. Okay. Yeah. So these two are something is important. Anyway, we will be discussing some numerical solutions. Uh, two important formulas to estimate the velocity of groundwater. Velocity of groundwater. Number one is this uh, Slitches formula, where velocity of uh, groundwater in terms of meter per day is equal to k dash. That is non-dimensional uh, constant value. Okay, and uh, I is is uh, hydraulic gradient, and D10 is effective size of uh, particle in the aquifer. So D10, D60, D30, and a lot of familiar in soil mechanics. D10, okay, effective size of the particle in the aquifer in terms of mm, and mu is equal to dynamic viscosity of water, and which is equivalent to 20 degrees Celsius, and mu is equal to 1 at 20 degrees Celsius, 1 centipoise. Okay, so please remember this formula to calculate velocity, uh, velocity of water uh, through uh, or groundwater velocity by Slitches formula. The second one is this Hazen's formula. And here again, velocity is equal to uh, k i d square by uh, 60 into 1.5 t plus 42. So these you can remember uh, this velocity in terms of meter per day, temperature in uh, Celsius and k days is equal to constant where you can have a value of 1000. So this uh, two equations will be using uh, like uh, uh, or uh, uh, we can use this formula to calculate the growth water velocity. Anyway, we'll be solving some numerical problems, and in that sense, we'll be familiar with uh, these notations and also the uh, units as well. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, how to find out the yield? Okay, it's very simple. Now, the primary estimation is about you have to uh, estimate the yield of the well. Okay, so that you can have two, three different methods. One is about theoretical method and second one is about pumping method or pumping test and third one is about recuperating test. So please make a note on these three. Okay, it's very simple. Theoretical method and you can simply remember Q is equal to area into velocity and uh, uh, area into velocity or something. So this formula, uh, you can use, uh, say example, uh, continuity equations. If a well is penetrated through an aquifer and water will rush into the well with a velocity of V, and if, if AS is equal to surface area of the aquifer, then you can calculate Q is equal to velocity into, uh, say, example, uh, specific the surface area of the well. Okay, and uh, the velocity again, it is, is being related to uh, VA actual velocity as well, and also the porosity. So please make a note on this two. So V this V is equal to n into VA, where VA is equal to actual velocity of the groundwater, and uh, V is equal, small V is equal to velocity of the water which rushes into the well and n is equal to porosity okay if small v is equal to n uh, n into v a and you can substitute in these equations thereby this equation becomes q is equal to n into v a into a s v a into a s okay so what do you do now this v a is his known factor because you can use either hessen's formula or switches formula to calculate v a value v a value okay and uh, the area of the aquifer into the well can also be found if the diameter of the well is also known and uh, the depth of the porous uh, strata is also known, thereby you can be able to calculate uh, pi dh. Pi dh is the area. And n is equal to the porosity of the sample 
okay and then you can take down this oil and bring it to the laboratory and test the porosity of the sample by knowing n and va and uh, a you could be able to find out what is the yield of the open well yield of a open well is it fine okay q q is equal to v into as where v is equal to the velocity of the water which is rushes into the well but i want what is the actual velocity the actual velocity is again Uh, is equal to uh, small v is equal to n into v a, where v a is equal to actual velocity, n is equal to porosity of the sample. Okay, then v s can be or v a uh, velocity can be calculated uh, using switches and Hessel's formula. What we have discussed in the previous slide, and the area can area of the aquifer can be calculated by knowing the diameter of the well and also the depth of the porous medium. Thereby, thus a s is equal to Uh, pi d into h and n is equal to again the porosity take out the sample and take it to the laboratory and estimate what is the porosity of the sample so by knowing va and as and also the porosity i can estimate the yield of the well very very easily okay this is theoretical method and second one is is uh, the pumping test method so what you do is you just install a pump install a pump okay and uh, uh, pump on continuously thereby and uh, you could able to Okay, uh, make a drawdown. Okay, so say example here. This is your well, and this is your initial water table. And if I have a pump and continuously pump out, okay, so water level will come down. Okay, so this is this you can call it as a drawdown. If I stop the pump, what will happen? A drawdown will be minimized and it will come back to the original position. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. so the pump is first uh, first of all installed so that you can also create a, a heavy drawdown in this water level so drawdown what i have marked here okay and what you do now the rate of pumping is then change is show that the water level in the well becomes constant okay what you do is is you have to make a situations like uh, the rate of pumping is equal to rate of replenishment okay thereby and uh, uh, you can est also estimate the yield of the pump or yield of the well is it okay so the pump is install install a pump and you make a sufficient drawdown and you cause a heavy drawdown uh, in its water level and the pumping rate is then changed or adjusted that the water level in the well becomes constant becomes constant okay becomes constant so what will happen now so whatever you pump out that will be given as the yield directly yield directly okay with respect to a particular uh, drawdown value so these are another method where you can estimate the pump this what normally they do it uh, normally in the uh, tube wells you would have noticed so people may say that uh, like uh, yield of the well in terms of you are pumping uh, uh, based on pump test based on pumping test okay and second one is about uh, recuperating test because this maintenance of Uh, the uh, say example uh, 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 well water level constant is very very difficult okay because you have to, you have, the previous one is, is you have to adjust uh, the uh, pump rate thereby you can able to maintain a constant water level but that is not at all feasible so what you do is is uh, to overcome that difficulty and people have tried with recuperating test recuperating test is, is something is very important you just switch on the pump you make a sufficient drawdown and you just stop the pump and if you stop the pump water level will rise then you just find out how much is time taken by the water to come back to the original level and that you just measure that's all uh, you can do it in a uh, recuperating test is it okay the second and third method is something's different second first method is to switch on the pump and uh, make a heavy drawdown and adjust the pump and you until you make a constant water level constant water level okay and uh, if it is a constant water level and whatever it is pump out that we can call it as a simple uh, you are uh, yield value yield value but uh, the making a constant uh, water level is always is a very very difficult challenge and uh, to overcome that it is been tried with recuperating test is very simple switch on the pump and make a drawdown and just stop the pump and the water will be rising automatically and you just measure the time taken by the water to come back to the normal level or to uh, uh, some other measured level is then noted so thereby you can uh, calculate what is the uh, say example uh, uh, yield of a particular well okay these three are something is important one is about theoretical method second one is about pumping method or third one is about rep recuperating test so these three are extensively used to measure the yield of a particular well yield of a well is it okay 
ओके देन ट्यूबवेल व्हेन यू मेक दिस आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन डिटेल ट्यूबवेल एंड ऑल यू हैव ऑलरेडी फैमिलियर सो व्हाट यू डू इज इज इफ यू वांट टू हैव अ लाइक इफ यू हैव अ प्लॉट नॉर्मली दे डू अ बोरिंग ऑपरेशन यू हैव सीन ओके सो यू जस्ट कॉल अ वेंडर एंड दे मे आल्सो गो बोर हैव अ बोर होल एंड यू विल आल्सो डिग अप टू द वाटर लेवल and uh, based on your yield you can also select the pump and you can also use it for your purposes that's what they do it okay tube well is a long pipe or a tube uh, which is is bored or drilled deep into the ground intercepting one or more water bearing strata so please make a note of one or more that's what now people have gone up to a level of almost is 1000 feet some areas they may go 1000 feet even if it, if i get a uh, extreme uh, drought situation i could able to get a water have you got my point imagine our situation if i how a well tube well only up to this this depth what will happen if it is anything more a heavy drought okay water water level draw down water level is uh, say example falls below this level i cannot get a water so that's what people now have a idea or thought at maximum they will go and 1000 feet or 1500 feet they go for a uh, tube well and any point of time any droughts i could able to get a water that's what they do it okay or every Drought condition, they will also extend the depth of their uh, tube well. Is it okay? Okay. Okay. So that's what do you uh, uh, deep tube wells are almost seventy to three hundred meter in uh, depth. Three hundred meter is almost nine hundred feet. Nine hundred feet, and uh, if I if I go for a maximum depth, I am there. I may get a more water. So there, the yield is almost is two hundred to two hundred and twenty liters per second. okay this deep wells and all cannot be with a manual boring and you need to have a heavy duty rotary drilling and drilling rigs you would have seen uh, uh, or you would have noticed uh, uh, rotary uh, drilling rigs okay and uh, thereby they may uh, sometimes blast or bore uh, the uh, say example even uh, hot boulder rocks also Boulder rocks also. Okay, so something is important. Okay, normal manual or normal boring may not be sufficient. We have to use rotary uh, uh, drilling rigs. Okay, where it will puncture or where it will bore the heavier rocks areas also. Heavy rock areas also. Okay, yes. And shallow and the deep tube wells. It is almost is twenty to seventy meter in depth. Okay, and it is is uh, tap water only for a particular aquifer, particular particular aquifer. and uh, then the water uh, yield is is very very low 15 to 20 liters per uh, second 22 or 15 to 20 liters per this you can either manually do it or you can also use some sort of light rigs or you can do some sort of water jet methods also or sometimes they may do hand boring devices where you can have a very shallow tube wells shallow tube wells okay so depending upon the depth you can have a shallow and also deep wells like this okay and the last one is about uh, uh, the different types of tube wells is one is about cavity and other is about the screen type okay so cavity is cavity is very simple and you can have a, a bottom it is always open so this also we have discussed in the previous one two three slides before that also so water will be again uh, flows into the well uh, into the well uh, something like this so you can have a ca cavity type tube wells like this okay so you just see the last statement cavity tube well consists of a pipe bored through a soil strata resting on the bottom of the strong clay layer okay bottom of the strong clay layer okay so uh, the once the cavity is in formed water will be collected the cavity is formed at the bottom and the water is is uh, aquifer enters the well pipe through its cavity shown in the figure In the initial stages if i do a pumping you may get a turbid water you can allow the water to collect then you just go for a, a pumping so this what they do it and these centrifugal and uh, compressor and turbine pumps can be used okay yes. and uh, screen or uh, strainer strainer tubes also you would have, you would have seen uh, in some cases okay so these are tough so in because these are the standy uh, strata so what you do if it is this crosses through a standy strata you can use strainer and if it is a clay strata you can do a plain pipe okay so if it is this strainer you could able to collect the water through the strainer is it okay so these are the deep uh, strata with uh, multiple uh, uh, pervious and also impervious layers okay in the pervious you could able to do uh, like pervious uh, strainer pipes and in the impervious layer you can use plain pipes so in this is you can also use uh, 
uh, strainer pupils. Okay, and in this strainer, you could also collect uh, these out of uh, instead of going with the strainer, and you could also use uh, normal gravity, say example uh, gravel packing, gravel pack slotted uh, pipe tubules. This also you can do it. Most of the cases they also do like this way also. Okay, so this is a comparison and uh, different uh, uh, the sources, uh, quantity, quality and accessibility, reliability and also what is the cost. Mm -hmm. So this you just have a comparison. Mm -hmm. Probably you could uh, familiar with this uh, task. Okay, yeah. So I'll stop here. And, uh, just have a glance and you also familiar with uh, uh, these layout diagrams. That is more than enough for the examination point of view and be familiar with the concepts and only the definitions. Okay, so whatever we discussed today, it is about spring and uh, well and uh, type of wells. Okay, have a glance. If it is any difficulty, probably we'll see later. Yeah, thank you so much.